Hey everybody, today Rado runs through La Granja No Siesta, which could also be called La Granja the Dice Game. And I'm super stoked for this, one of my most anticipated games of the year, because in 2014, I think it was, when La Granja came out, that turned out to be one of the absolute best games of the year. I think it was my number three, just behind Shadow and Crossfire and... Uh, oh, Roll for the Galaxy. So that's high, high praise. Um, and so I could not wait to try out the follow-up, the little, its little brother, La Granja Lo Siesta. So let's jump right into it. This is, as its title implies, a dice game. Basically, if you remember La Granja, one of the cool things about it was it had a really awesome and very tension-filled dice draft every round. This entire game is the dice draft. What we're going to be doing every round is we're going to roll some dice. We're going to take turns snagging these that represent different goods that we can harvest and get ready. And then we're going to use them by taking a pencil. The game comes with a pencil for everybody and marking how we're going to use all those resources to build up our farm and uh, ship off goods and score lots of points. Now I'm playing a two-player game today. I'm the green player. Jen is the blue player. The more players you play with, the more dice you end up rolling every round. In a two-player game, we're going to be rolling five. And enough talk. Let's get going. I am the first player because I've got the big old sow marker. And I will roll. Bah! All righty. Okay, what do we got here? So we have got a donkey. We've got uh, some money, a peso, I suppose. We've got a pig. And we've got two of these. If you take this, this allows you to get one grain and one olive. So, I'm the first player. I'm going to take one of those. Then Jen's going to take one. Then I'm going to take another. And then Jen's going to take another. And then, after we're all taken, there'll be one left. Everybody gets the benefit of the final one. And so, let the draft begin. Although, actually, before we get going, I should say, it is slightly different with more players. If we were playing a three-player game, what happens, let's say, is we roll... Everybody takes something. I take a buck. Uh, Jen takes a, uh, what do you call it? A, 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 a donkey, a donkey. And uh, Gertrude takes some goods. Then, of the remaining, we re-roll them again. And then, I'm still first player, so I take a sow. Jen takes a second donkey. Gertrude takes a sow. And then a donkey is left for everybody. So, with three or four players, uh, the dice pool gets re-rolled a couple of times. But in a two-player game, after you roll, that's just revealed everything. So let's go again. All right, what do we get? We got a donkey, a uh, buck, two of the basic goods, and ooh, a hat, which is for siesta. That, uh, this is my favorite one. Got, if one of these come up, i got to take it. I am going to have a siesta this round. You can see the little hat. Uh, you know, be, make sure not to push yourself too hard. It's very, very important in no siesta. I'm going to have a siesta. So I take this die, the first one, and I mark it by using one of my four discs. At the beginning of the game, I have four, but you can see there's up to three more I can get over the course of the game. And I mark that I have taken a siesta. All right. Now Jen's going to take one of the remainder. What does she want? She'll go on ahead and take the money. And so she will mark that. And now, like I said, if we were three or four players, we'd roll the remainder and go again. But in a two-player game, everything just gets rolled once. So I will take... Um, what am I going to take? I'll take, I'll take a burro. I'll take a donkey since it's the only one. And that means, well, Jen, she's going to take one of these, which means she has taken a grain and an olive. All right. And so the last die that's left, everybody gets access to this. So I get a grain and an olive. And Jen, she only has one disc left. So she can only claim one of these two. She could take another grain or another olive, her choice. She will go on ahead and grab a, a second olive. Alrighty. So that's that. Now, we are done collecting stuff. This is just a reminder of what we've done. Now everybody takes their pencil and transfers these goods permanently to one of the many different spots that are on this sheet. Now the game comes... Should have pulled this out ahead of time. Ah, the game comes with a big old sheet of these cards. So, oh, for heaven's sakes. There we go. So, uh, you got a lot of sheets here. They're all two-sided. And, you know, when a push comes to shove, you can always erase one of these if you run out of them. But, man, this is a lot of gameplay you're going to get out of this. And I guess when you, if you are running low, you'll just have to save a couple of them and take them down to the print shop and get them laminated. 
So what all can we do? Well, the things we can improve our farm with. We can spend money to upgrade our homestead by putting roofs on. And we pull these rooms randomly and each one of them gives us a benefit we can use later. So we can use money for that. We can use combinations of various goods uh, to hire helpers. You can see at the beginning of the game, each of us has six helpers available to us. We have access to the same six, and that gives us six extra special powers. If I want to hire a helper, if on a given turn I've got a sal and I've got wheat, I could tick both of these off, and then that means I would be able to put a helper in this space, one of the six that was available. And um, the, these helpers who are a little bit more... The needy. This one needs a grape, an olive, and a sow. Hey, I get the helper and I get one victory point at the end of the game. Two victory points. If I fill up all of these, the siesta and the dollar and the grape and the sow. So you can get helpers, which will give you special powers for the rest of the game. And some of them will also give you points. You can also decide if you're going to ship your goods uh, far away to far away lands. That's what this one is. Basically, if you in a given round have three of a given resource. And Jen almost has that. Jen has two olives. If she had three olives right now, she could say, hey, I'm going to ship all three of these olives. She would tick this to indicate she's done it. She'd ship them all off. She'd get two points for that. And she'd get a wild card commodity, which is very, very powerful. She almost got it, um, but she didn't quite. So, uh, but to be able to do these, you have to have three of a kind in a given round. Because you don't get to save any of these for next round. you got to use all of these this round. So it can be kind of tricky to pull these off. Although there are ways around that. And then finally, this is shipping your goods off to a foreign land. Or you know, far away land. This is just taking them to the local market. Which means you've got to get your market stall ready. But for this market stall, which is worth 5 points to the first player who does it. And 3 points to every player afterwards who does it. Get an olive. Then... At wheat, then grape, then olive, then wheat, then grape, then olive, then wheat. You'll notice there's this arrow going from left to right indicating that you must go in this direction. If you get all of these items in this order, as well as one donkey, which doesn't have to be in order, you can get that any time. If you fill all these in, you ship it off to market, you get five points if you're the first player to do it, three points if you're the second player, or third or fourth. Um, you also get another one of these wild card commodities, and you get to take one of your discs and claim one of these spaces, which means you will get bonus points for something at the end of the game. Bonus points for helpers, bonus points for um, distance, for, you know, basically bonus points for all the various things you might have done. You can get. Um, you, you can make those actions more valuable. So there's three opportunities to th send things off to the local market, um, and they give you five, seven, or nine points if you're first, three, five, or seven if you're second, plus those other bonuses. And then the last thing you can do with all the goods we've gotten is you can just store them, which means you mark them over here. As soon as somebody has stored one olive, one wheat, and one grape, they get a victory point. If they do it again, a full set, they get another victory point, and so on and so on. Same thing down here. If you store a donkey and a sow, you get a victory point. And then for your second docky plus Sal, you get another victory point. So you can get points down here also. This is what we're going to be doing. And so what am I going to do? Well, let's see here. I do have an olive and a wheat and a donkey. So I think I'm going to start working on shipping these things off to the local market. I will use my donkey. I'll mark that here. And my olive and my wheat will be, here's the olive. And here's the wheat. So I'm starting to fill this market up to ship it, or this cart up to ship it off. And then the last thing, remember I was going to do a siesta? I take this. Now, the things I can do with siesta is, well, this is one of the things that's needed to hire this very expensive uh, helper. But instead of using that, I am going to move forward on the siesta track. Every time you move forward on the siesta track, that's one point. It's worth one point at the end of the game. Plus, once I make it to this second space, and then third, fourth, fifth, sixth, the seventh space, and the tenth space, I unlock another disc. The more rested I am, the more stuff I can do, the more things I can store, the more actions I can take. So I just basically scored a point on the siesta track. And once somebody gets their siesta track all the way to the end, that's what triggers the end of the game. All right, so that's how I use mine. Everybody can be doing this simultaneously. It's not like one person has to wait for somebody else to go. And so what is Jen going to do? Well, she got some money. She got some money. All right, she's going to go on ahead and fill in. Oh, by the way, in the same way that you have to go from left to right on the shipping to the local markets, you also have to go from left to right for the roof. Jen got one money, so she's going to fill in the first space. 
okay? And then she's got two olives and a wheat. If only she had one more olive, she would definitely ship this off overseas. But she doesn't, so what is she going to do with these instead? She, like me, could start filling up to ship them off locally. But instead, I think Jen will take the wheat and put it over here because now once she gets a pig, she will have completed both of these and she'll be able to pick one of her helpers. Alrighty, so that was the wheat. And then she's got two olives. So the olive could come over here so she could start working on collecting a second worker. The olive could come over here to be the first thing to ship off. Or she could just say to heck with shipping off to the local market, she could just store this olive. Because remember, once she stores the olive, a wheat, and a grape, she will get a point that way. Um, no, I think Jen wants a lot of helpers. So she will go on ahead and go on ahead and store this olive here. So now she needs a pig. And over here, she needs a pig and a grape. All right. So that's how she used her two olives. That was it. Um, you know, as you can see, the game is super duper simple. You do the draft, and then you decide how you want to lay all that stuff out. Now, at the end of the turn, the uh, player order marker moves over. Also, at the end of the turn, if somebody had filled in all their spaces for a helper, at the end of the round, they would get to hire the helper. But nobody did that, so we're done. Now, Jen's the first player, and we do the next round of drafting. Some grapes, some of the wheat plus olives. A pig and a siesta. Jen is first. Right. And the draft gets interesting. Jen wants that siesta. Every siesta is worth a point. Plus, the if, if, if I get that siesta, I'm going to cross this line and I'm going to get another disc, which gives me a lot more power. So Jen wants to take that siesta for herself, but she's afraid. She also wants to get this pig because if she gets this pig, she will have filled this up and she will be able to hire a helper. And she's afraid that if she takes the siesta, I'll take the pig because I can see how much she needs that. That, of course, is the nature of a, uh, of, a, of a drafting game. So what does Jen do? Oh, that's a tough choice. Now, I might not take the pig because Jen, if she looks, I mean, the pig, what would I do with it? If I take the single pig, well, I could start trying to get a helper or I could start working on this market stall or I could store the pig because a single pig won't let you ship to foreign lands. It won't let you build... Is Jen, no, Jen doesn't want to take the chance. Man, she wants that hat, but she's going to take the pig instead. So she has collected the pig. And me, I love to take a siesta. I'm going there, and Jen knew it. So now what are we going to do with the rest? Um, Let's see. Jen needs grapes and another pig to finish this. So she probably wants to get a grape. But this is a double. If she takes this, she gets two things. She gets a wheat and an olive. So that's pretty tempting too. Um, yeah, I think she'll go ahead and take the wheat and the olive. Wheat and olive. And so that means, I guess, I'll take a grape. Or oops, a grape. And now everybody gets a grape. So Jen gets a grape and I get a grape. And look at that. Um, I... Wait a minute. Where's my other disc? Oh, I... <laughs> He he he. Right. Oh dear. There's I got our disc mixed up. Right. What did Jen take? She ended up taking a pig and the things, and she got a grape. And me, I got a siesta, a grape, and another grape. So that's interesting. I only pulled three items this round, whereas Jen got four. So even though I got that all-important siesta I wanted, Jen, uh, through the draft, ended up getting more stuff than me. So we'll see how well that works out for her. Uh, all right. So, and again, we can all do this at the same time. I mean, I'm going to use my siesta to move up. And hey, I just unlocked another disc. Although I can't, I mean, I, I, which I'll, so I'll have five discs to use next turn. And the reason you want more discs is because depending on how the, the draft goes, you can get more stuff. But also, um, eventually, when, remember when we ship stuff off to the local market and we get to take one of our discs we previously claimed, put over here, and this will give us victory more points at the end of the game, depending on where we put it. So you want these discs so you can claim more bonus points at the end of the game as well. So anyway, so I took a siesta, I got another disc, and now I've got two grapes. What am I going to do with two grapes? Well, again, if I had three grapes, I'd ship them off, but I'm just shy again. But I do need one grape. To keep on working on my market trip. And now I got my other grape. I could start doing this other one. Or I could start working on getting a helper like Jen does. Like Jen has. I think I'll do that. I'll go on ahead and go for this easy guy who's not worth points. But now if I just get a donkey. Because I've already got the donkey I need for this. If I get another donkey, I'll be able to get a helper. Right. Okay. So that's what I did. And Jen, meanwhile, she's got a pig. And boom, she's getting a helper at the end of this round. Not immediately, because uh, she wouldn't be able to use it immediately at the end of the round. And then let's see, she's got 
Olive, wheat, and grape. Right. Okay, she used her grape to almost, she's almost ready. Now with the pig, she can get this other helper. So hopefully she'll get that next turn. And then she's got an olive and wheat. Hmm. So she could start shipping off. Now I'm in the lead here. But you know what? I might not fill this up for a while. And because this is a race, first player to ship off to the local market gets five points as opposed to three. Does Jen want to start racing me on this? Or does she want to do something else with this other olive and other wheat? Because, I mean, um, this helper needs wheat. This helper needs olive. So she could start just trying to get more helpers. Or she could store this stuff. Now, the thing is, once you've stored it, that's it. You're not really going to use it for the rest of the game. Um, all, unless you're playing the advanced game. So we're, I didn't mention up front, we're playing the basic game. In the advanced game, there are a bunch of additional helpers in the game. And they have a bunch of additional cool powers. Including the power to pull something out of storage if you want to. But I'm playing the basic game, so all these... These super advanced powers aren't going to be available to us. I'll talk about that in the final thoughts, though. Right. So what is Jen going to do with that last olive and last wheat? Does she go on that, or does she just start trying to store stuff for winter, which will be worth more points? I think she'll just store these. Yeah. All right. Or does she... Eh. No, she will. She'll store. All right. So there's an olive, and there's a wheat. All right. So she didn't use those for anything. But remember, now once she gets a grape, that's a point. And this is not a super high scoring game. Every point counts. Right. So that was the end of the second round. And hey, look at that. Jen's got a helper so she can take any one of these six. Now, uh, this one lets you turn commodities, which you normally get by doing um, sales to the local or the distant market. You can convert a commodity to a siesta. That's nice if Jen's planning on shipping, but maybe she's not. This is the one I think she's most interested in. This one means that um, you know you, 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 you take a die that says grape, you put it here. This means once per turn, you could take a given disc and move it one space left or right. So you could turn a grape into money or a grape into wheat. That gives you a lot of flexibility. I'm thinking Jen's probably going to snag this one. There we go. But you know, and no, no, there's still plenty of other helpers she can get over the course of the game too. This one means that when you eventually fill up your cart and you're ready to take it to market, you don't need a donkey. So taking this, if you are going to plan on a game where you do all three market stalls, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. You need six donkeys to send all these off. This saves you from having six donkeys if you're going to go heavy into that strategy. If you start building a roof, and Jen just needs one more money to build a roof, normally when you build a roof, you just draw one at random and you take whatever bonus it gives you. If you have this helper though, you get to Draw two and pick the one you want, so you can. You're not um, subject to luck quite so much. This one is whenever you do a uh, shipping off to the distant market, you immediately get one good back of your choice. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, that's potentially if you ship a lot of stuff to the foreign market, that's six free goods over the course of the game. If you can get yourself in a situation where you can ship a lot of stuff, and let's see, this one is interesting to Jen as well. Since you're starting scoring, this is saying every time you completely fill a set of either pig plus donkey or olive plus wheat plus grape. Every time you do a complete set, in addition to getting a point at the end of the game, you'll get a buck immediately. So this could make you a lot of money and make storage a little bit more attractive. All right, but anyway, so Jen took the thing that gives her more flexibility over the dice. I still don't have any workers. That was the end of the second round. Let's go on to the third round. I am now the first player. And let's see how it goes. Wah! Okay. Oh, no siesta this time, folks. There's some money though, and I bet Jen wants that because if, if I don't take that money right now, Jen will get it, and that will give her a, uh, a roof bonus. But a single money won't do anything for me. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, and instead, I mean, I've got all this stuff. I kind of want to grab the double thing because I want to make use of all my... So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and get a wheat and an olive. Because uh, remember, I need another olive and another wheat to keep on filling up this market. So this is what I snagged. And so what is Jen going to snag now? Jen will snag the money. She was hoping I'd leave it for her, and I did. So she just got some cash money. Now it's my turn. And, well, you know, to finish this, I need the olive, the wheat, and then I need a grape. Hey, look at this, a delicious grape. I'll go on ahead and take that. And so that means Jen, well, she doesn't have much of a choice. She's going to go on ahead and take a pig. And now both of us get a pig. All righty. And this time the tables have turned. I ended up getting four things and Jen only got three. Now, let's see how this works out for me. Um, right. <clears throat> so, I'm going to go on ahead and use these goods. One, two, three. To get ever closer, here's the olive and the wheat 
and the grape. I'm almost ready to ship this off to town. Woohoo! I just need one more olive and one more wheat, and then I'll score five points, and I will be the first to be able to claim any one of these. A uh, point for every di every disc I've got at the end of the game, a point for every set of commodities, a point for every set of livestock, a point for every roof, a point for every helper, Jen's got a helper, and a point for every long distance. And in a two-player game, uh, the first player to gets one locks it in. Uh, the, the number of available bonus points is basically equal to number of players minus one. So um, you want to get here first because if both Jen and I were going for roofs, I'd want to snag this, which means she wouldn't get it. All right, so anyway, so I did all that, and hey, I've got a pig as well. What am I going to do with this pig? Here, piggy piggy. Oh, I needed a donkey to finish this to get a helper. What am I going to do with a single pig? What am I going to do with a pig? Um, well, I could start on that or that to get a helper, or I could get working. Yeah, you know, I better get a helper as well. But I'm already working. I needed a donkey. No donkeys were got rolled. Ah. Well, do I start working on a second helper, or do I finish my first helper and start working on filling up? I'm going to start working on the most valuable market run which is worth nine points. And so, I, that's why I, I sent my other Sal. All right, so that's what I did. Jen, um, so she's got a buck. She could spend that to finish this and get a roof. But this is interesting. Remember, Jen's got that special helper power that lets her slide a disc left or right. Jen's going to take this dollar. She's going to slide it to the right. And boom, just like that, she's got three pigs. She is going to ship them overseas to the for to the distant market so Jen just got that that is two points to her and she gets a commodity Com you are allowed to carry one commodity over from one turn to the next a commodity is a wild card it can stand in for anything you can use it whenever you want um, so that's a pretty handy thing plus like I said you can build up lots of commodities over the course of the game now that Jen's got this wild card commodity if she gets two things she can convert that commodity into a third thing and do another over you know a distant sale and if she keeps doing distant sale well she might want to get this helper who gives her goods back every time she does it. so you could she could start her her long distance uh, market thing Whereas me, what have I just doubled? Oh, I'm just going, I'm just really focusing on the local market. So that was it. Jen's going to save this for later. Nobody got a helper. So at the end of the round, nobody takes a helper. The dice come back. We're going to roll and Jen is first. All righty. Two pigs. Two dollars. Oh, Jen is definitely going to get her roof finished this turn. Hooray, which is going to give her a bonus. And, um, and Jen's going to go first. She's going to go on ahead and take a peso. And... All right. Oh no, no. But we don't do it yet. She just and now you'll notice interestingly because Jen's got this commodity, she's only got three discs left to go. So she does want to ship stuff off to the local market so she can unlock another disc. Um, right. So anyway, so she'll go on ahead and take the peso, and now she's only got two more things she can claim this turn because she's holding on to that wild. My turn. What do I want? Uh, peso would be nice. Oh no, I want. Oh, I want a donkey. I need a donkey for this helper. Why do donkeys not roll? Rats. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and take. This is what I needed. I needed one more olive and one more wheat. And I'm going to finish this long-term goal. So now Jen gets to take something else. Wow. She could take another buck. Either that or a pig. What's it going to be? Um, actually, she's already shipped off. So she can't ship pigs off to the far market again. Oh, she's definitely going to take a pig. Hello. Because she needs it, this last pig is going to give her another helper. She's going to have two helpers soon. Yay! Okay, my turn. Do I want a pig or do I want money? Money, 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 money. Money! I'll take the pig. Because as you can see... Now, this is an interesting choice for me. If I take the pig, I'm giving Jen another dollar. If I take the dollar, I'm giving Jen another pig. Because remember, the last one that's out, everybody gets. So I got to think, not only which of these do I... Because I'm going to get, as the last player, I'm going to get both of these. Which one of these do I want Jen to have? Because she will get whatever I leave behind. Um, let's see. She's already got the buck, so I know she's going to finish that roof. Do I want her to have another pig? I know, well, I know she's got a pig, so she knows she's finishing that as well. And yeah, I think I'm going to take the money. And right, so I took the money. And now both of us get a pig. There we go. All right. So we can go on ahead and start, uh, you know, deploying our stuff again. So what do I got? All right. Okay. Big thing. I got my olive and my wheat. And now it's oh so sweet. I have finished my first market run. I filled all this up. I've already did the donkey a while ago. And so I circle the five. 
That's a reminder at the end of the game, I get five points and all the other players cross out the five as a reminder, they cannot earn that five. Woohoo! And I take one of my discs, or, oh, and I take a disc and I get a wild card commodity and I take one of my other discs. It's a good thing I have extra discs because I did so much CSing and I get to claim uh, bonus points at the end of the game on any of the metrics. And let's see, what are the metrics? I haven't put anything into storage yet. I haven't done any roofs yet. I haven't gotten any helpers yet. I haven't done any distance sales yet. Um, but I have gotten extra helpers. You know what? I love siestas. I think I'm going to lock this in. Every siesta for me now, instead of being worth one point, is being worth two points. That's, that's huge, folks. I am definitely, it is hugely important now that when the, whenever I can, I draft siesta hats. And it's equally important to Jen that she snags them and prevents me from getting them because each one of them is worth two points to me now instead of one. So uh, that's how I did my trip to the market. And let's see, and then I've got some money. I guess I'll get a roof as well. Everybody loves a roof, although I'm only halfway there. And then I've got this pig. Pig. I will go on ahead and what am I going to do with a single pig? Oh, it's the second pig I need for this trip to the market. And you know what? Now that I've given up one of my um, discs, I'm, I'm short on discs, I'm going to go on ahead and use this wild card I got. I'm going to convert this into a donkey, which means, hooray, I now get a helper also. Yeah. All right. So that's what I did. Now what's Jen going to do? All righty. Well, I mean, she could do that slippy slide again, but she cannot ship three pigs off again, so that's unfortunate. But anyway, Jen is going to use this money, 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 money to get the first roof. All righty. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Actually, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right, so she gets a roof. I was thinking, hey, she could use it. Well, she's going to use one of these pigs to get another helper. And I was thinking, oh, she could take the helper that lets her draw two. But right, she doesn't get the helper until the end of the turn. So even though she has now unlocked another helper, her second helper, um, she's going to get a roof right now, but she cannot take the helper until the end of the round. So Jen gets a roof and it is, oh, anytime she wants. This is a one-time thing. It sits here. Whenever she wants, she can flip that and she can move one disc two spaces or two discs one space. So this is like a souped up version of the other power she had. Now instead of that, she might have said, oh, anytime she wants, she gets one donkey whenever she needs it. Anytime she wants, she gets one grape whenever she needs it. Let's see, there's some doubles in here too. Oh, gets a siesta. You know, I want that. I love siestas. Two pigs. Some of these are doubles as well. But anyway, so Jen got a double movement. So she has a lot of control. And in fact, now that's interesting. She just got this. She could use this right now to slide this around. Although, you'll notice there's this line right here. You cannot slide across the line. You cannot turn a pig into a siesta, unfortunately. But she could turn this pig into a grape if she wanted. What does she want? What does she want? What does she want? Hmm. Let's see here. All right, she's got, she want to get another helper. You know, she would like to get a grape because then she will have filled um, all this and that's a point down here. But I don't know if it's worth it to go on ahead and slide this. I think she's going to save this for later. Um, but she can still turn this pig into a burrow or into money. I think she will turn it into money and start working on her second roof. Now this first roof was worth a point. Her second roof will be worth a point. So she turned it into money, did that, and she is still holding on to this wild card because she wants to use this wild card once she gets a pair of something to be able to be the third thing so she can do more long distance shipping. So that was that. And now at the end of the turn, Jen gets her second helper. And I've still got no, oh, and I get my first helper as well. And let's see here. You know what? Uh, since I'm already working on this trip to the market and it's going to take three burrows, I'm going to take this helper that says I don't need donkeys. So that saves me three donkeys, potentially five, if I try to fill both of these in before the end of the game. So that's the helper I chose for myself. Jen now gets her second helper. And, uh, or second helper there, sorry. I don't think she wants that. Since she now is kind of in the business of trying to do these long distance shipments uh, and if she gets this, she gets an extra good. That'll help her do the shipments even faster. She'll take this. And so now, um, you know, that means when she does it, she uses this and a pair to get another shipment. Once that's done, she gets another item of her choice immediately. And she's hoping to ship all of these because that's 10 points to do five more of these shipments. And that'll be five more goods over the course of the game. That's pretty nice. So that's Jen's second helper. And she's still holding on to her wild card. We move on to the next round. I am the first player. And we roll. And we draft. And look, my gosh, look at all these grapes. Jen's very happy about that because she knows 
She's going to at least get two of these grapes, maybe three. That means she's going to ship overseas to grapes and take advantage of that helper right now. Um, plus, if she gets another grape, she could slide that grape over here to be worth more money to get another roof. So she likes this role. Me, what am I going to do with all this? I need a siesta. I didn't get my siesta to be able to move further up the track. Um, I'm not working on stuff over here. If I get three grapes, I could ship overseas. There's no money to finish my um, roof. I'm like, ah, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I don't know, folks, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you guys a pretty good idea of how Legrandha No Siesta works. And now if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes. Five, four, three, two, one.